Okay, we're back here live at the Stanford Symposium, the XL Stanford Symposium, the 17th annual symposium where all the geeks and industry comes together. This is really XL partners, part even the relationship with Stanford. This is SiliconANGLE, the Cube, we're a flagship program. We we'll go out the events, extract the signal from the noise. It's our fourth year, and you know we're kind of making our way back into Silicon Valley. We've been doing a lot of enterprise, a lot of disruptive technologies first blog to cover cloud, mobile, and social. So we've also been watching all the moves that Excel's been making, certainly on the consumer side, but on the enterprise side, very impressive of late. And we have uh, Adia Agawala, VP of Engineering at Dropbox, and Samir at Excel Partners, who's going to uh, share with us just some commentary. We're going to shoot the breeze on, on um, obviously, your business is great. Thank We're you. We're big fans of what you guys have done. Um, obviously a success story. Great Long way to go. Long great, way to go. Great culture you have inside the company from what we can we haven't reported yet, but we can talk about that later. Um, but really the trend that you guys are really riding is this idea of getting out in the marketplace with a really good product. Classic example of using open source software, mm -hmm. putting a product out there and then scaling it up very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. And then also just iterating and building faster and stronger yeah. products. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you one, give us an update on what you've done that made Dropbox so successful. And then we'll talk about what you guys are doing right now. Sure, I mean, I think that every company, at a high level, the, one, the big thing that we have done is that we have managed to hire the best. Um, I think that every Silicon Valley company says this, which is that you know, we only want to hire the 10x engineers, only want to hire the best. But I think at Dropbox, that philosophy is just so ingrained. And here's an example. Um, our co-founder, Arash, interviews almost everybody who ends up joining the company, just because that combination of like intelligence and culture fit is so important to us. Um, so I just think we have hired, hired really, really well. And it's been difficult, to, obviously, you know, it's the, the toughest part in hiring well is when you're in hyper growth mode, which is when you want to double the company you know, every year, how do you make sure you don't let the quality go down? And I think we have managed to do that. So tell us the story when you guys hit that tipping point, it's like, okay, wow, we got to get serious. And then how did Excel enter the, enter the mix? Um, well, you know, I think the Excel investment was before I joined, so I'll let Samira answer that. Samira, talk about that. When did you? When did that hit? Yeah, it, we um, we invested in the company in 2008, and uh, you know I'd been working with, uh, with Drew and Arash even prior to that. It was uh, it was one of these companies where we knew that eventually someone would solve the problem about how to move uh, information to the cloud, data to the cloud, and they had just a very uh, thoughtful approach to it that um, was much more consumer centric and made it. Uh, a type of service that would be very easy to adopt um, by consumers so they wouldn't have to think differently, act differently, they could work in their normal way, but all of a sudden they would start to be, be able to take advantage of it. But it wasn't like this phone. home run enterprise play right out of the box. No it was not, time. it was very much of a consumer story and it was designed for the consumer and even the early adoption was all about getting consumers to put um, you know, to put their, their stuff, as we still call it today, their stuff in the cloud. Yeah. And what we found, and this is one of the, the most powerful concepts of it, which is that as people started to use it, they brought it to work and started using it for personal use and for work use. And from the very bottom levels of organizations at the very grassroots level, they, uh, they started um, bringing it into companies. And now today, through that method, literally with no salespeople, no marketing, you have a couple million businesses that run on Dropbox. So Dropbox for all the other, uh, initiated is basically in cloud file sharing stores and beyond more. Mm -hmm. I actually start as a consumer thing, hey, I want to store some files. Um, you send it was out there at the time, kind of, you know, still on a, kind of some older tech. You guys had a cloud version. Um, but I want to talk about something a little bit different than that, and that is, is that the big trend that we talk about on SiliconANGLE and Wikibon is how shadow IT has become a legitimate process to it. And we're covering the Amazon <coughs> Web Summit uh, right now, uh, and then we're going to be at reInvent. So that's a big, Amazon has a legitimized IT going around uh, the normal IT gatekeepers to go in the cloud. You guys obviously took advantage of that, and so did Box.net, but you guys more than Box, although Box claims they have a zillion more customers. Uh, from what we see is that, hey, okay, i got to store some stuff, but then it becomes, okay, I'm storing some stuff in the cloud, then it's like, okay, process improvement. How do I integrate that? So that shadow IT, working in the shadows, is now a legitimate innovation ground for enterprises. So can you guys comment about what you guys are seeing in that area and what some of the key trends are around enterprises and IT saying, hey, I want to use more Dropbox, maybe it's security, data protection. Mm -hmm. we'll start with you. I think the way I think of it is that um, the reason why a lot of people kind of have made this transition from using Dropbox for their personal data and like work data is because it improves productivity. It makes you know like your life simpler. It's like you know you don't have to worry about where your stuff is, losing your stuff, and that yeah. applies across different contexts. Now, as we move into the enterprise, you rightly pointed out, having giving IT administrators control 
visibility, giving them confidence about our security. These are clearly things that we need to build out and not just build out, but do an amazing job of. Like the same experience we bought to consumers in terms of like the simplest solution that just works. I believe we can provide that to IT administrators. And um, I will say this is the first time hearing the term shadow IT, but if I understand it correctly, I basically, the way I think of it is that we can actually make the lives of IT administrators around the world for the two million businesses that we have on Dropbox way, way simpler. Um, and we can do all of this while providing the same amazing user experience across like your work and your personal stuff. And I think that's a pretty special opportunity. Yeah, yeah so shadow IT, you should contact the Wikibon guys because one of the things that we're fleshing out is IT is very much a lot of rules, right? A lot of there's mm -hmm. governance issues, there's some sovereign software, all this compliance. Mm -hmm. And speed and productivity is really the, the priority. So the business units who are the customer of IT mm -hmm. aren't being served fast enough. So what you're seeing is the shadows, mm -hmm. an underground IT economy, because you can go to the cloud. Guys are smart, they put their credit card down, they'll go to Amazon, yep. spin up an app and say, hey, I got to store some data. Mm -hmm. uh, make get five approvals and six months later, or go to Dropbox and get instant approval. Mm -hmm. So that's the trend, right? So that's more of a, uh, a buzzword. Samir, what are you seeing there? Obviously, you're looking at a lot of portfolio companies, you know, security's an issue, all these things are out there. Do you agree with the shadow IT trend? And do you have any commentary there? Yeah, I think it's uh, you know we. Uh, I'm glad you came up with a new moniker for it. We uh, we've always called it the consumerization of IT, and the idea behind that is that you know there's there's needs that users and enterprises have, and they aren't always very quickly or appropriately addressed by internal IT. And there's phenomenal cloud services that exist, consumer cloud services in the case of Dropbox, that serve a great purpose for business. So people bring it in, and we look actually for other companies that follow that same kind of model that's very low friction, adoption in enterprises, um, you know, literally zero touch or low touch sales. And then over time, we feel like we can then go to those companies and say, your users are already using this. They're effective, they're productive. Let's talk about enterprise uh, solutions and an enterprise deal after the fact. Adia, I want you to talk about the engineering side. Obviously, you're scaling up, you're on the panel here on the symposium talking about scaling up SaaS. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I mean, I didn't listen, but I'm sure it was kind of, you know, leveled up a little bit, not going deep in the weeds. But I want you to be specific about some of the things that you guys are doing on the cloud and from an engineering standpoint, because you know you have to build in the ops side of it to make it easier, to more productive for users. Mm -hmm. What are you guys doing engineering-wise that, that you'd like to share with the folks out there? Is it your know, proprietary stack? I mean, obviously Facebook builds their own stuff, but uses open source uh, software and commodity scale out mm -hmm. open source. So you guys in the same boat, can you just yeah, share? We, we use a combination. We obviously are heavy users of AWS, and we're super happy with like the performance and the security that they provide. But we also run a large installation of our own machines to basically like essentially manage the file system. Um, I think in terms of what we are doing... I Sca think it's all scale out open source, right? All open source? We use a lot of open source, but we also write a bunch of proprietary uh, services and code on but top of But you're not of buying source. software. You write your own, right? We write our own software. Okay. We don't buy software, yes. Uh, I think that's... Commercial happening. software. Yeah, commercial software. Um, <laughs> Oracle. Yeah, I, I, the way I think of it is that... My job is to create the proper emphasis within yeah. the company, within engineering, like kind of like a respect and emphasis on providing the most scaled out, like the highly scalable as well, highly secure like engineering practices, right? And I think that, you know, often people are looking for a magic bullet, like a silver bullet, a magic solution. And I don't think that there is one except that you actually care about it and you keep on like essentially like baking that into your, the culture of your organization. So that's the way I think of it, yeah. And so in your, and from a discipline standpoint, when you're hiring, you're looking for guys who know open source or anything specific, any new areas you're looking at, any cool projects that you're kicking the tires at, uh, you can talk about? Not, not in particular. We don't have like particular open source projects that we go and monitor for people. What I'm really looking for is a dedication to excellence uh, and essentially like being having the ability to sweat the small details. One of the really interesting things is that if you if you do have a history of being an open source contributor, we can go look at all the code that you wrote over the years. And I think it paints a like pretty good picture of like your character and your profile as an engineer or as a coder, yeah. right? Um, and I think we are looking it's for... It's your digital DNA. Exactly. It's your work product. Yeah, and we're looking for somebody who who like, you know, takes pride in building something that is correct in the last two or three percent because the space that we are in, we can't like, you know, um, be right three nines of the time. Like, you know, like if your hard drive didn't work once every thousand times, you you'd feel your computer was broken. And that's kind of the level that we hold ourselves to. Great. Samir, talk about some of the investment trends that Excel is uh, investing in right now. Obviously, cloud, enterprise cloud is interesting. We're going to have uh, Rich Wong on about mobile. What are you seeing? Yeah, we, um, you know, we've, uh, obviously spent a lot of time in some of the most uh, um, innovative consumer and web services uh, out there, but 
you know, historically and in recent times have always spent uh, a significant amount of energy thinking about next generation products and services for enterprises. And so today, what we're particularly interested in, we have a, a big data fund that is all um, oriented around investing in early stage companies that are really refreshing the whole data uh, um, analytics um, and, and data management stack and we have a series of investments from seed you know through later stage investments that follow that theme we are also very interested in sort of the next generation of enterprise SaaS and I have a number of investments in enterprise companies that are that are delivering applications to enterprise uh, you know um, via the cloud and then I think this third area is really around uh, the idea of consumerized um, services for enterprises like Dropbox, like Prezi, you know, very consumer-like services that get adopted through very organic means at enterprises. Um, and we think that there's a variety of different areas and companies where the consumerization of IT still has yet to happen, and we're very excited about companies like that as well. Yeah, well certainly, we're tracking that consumerization of IT. Final question, Adia, what do you see, what do you want people to know about Dropbox in the next year? Looking back, when we come back to the next symposium, or next time we see you on theCUBE, what do you want to do in the next year? What's your major goals and accomplishments? Look back and say, hey, it was a successful year. Our team did one, two, and three. Um, it's a really good question. I think that the first thing I want to do is to be able to make sure that we provide a great experience for IT administrators. I mean, we have said this a couple of times. Like, clearly, like Dropbox is a product that seems to have resonated with people in at work, right? But I know we have a lot to build for IT administrators. We have started building a lot of it around control and visibility. But I, again, like the bar I want to set for myself is not not to think of this as shadow IT or something like that. I want to just I want an IT administrator to go up there and be like. This has made handling all the data in my organization so much easier, so much more secure than it ever was, right? And that's the kind of bar that we set for our product. The second thing is, I really want to make sure that we continue to provide an amazing experience on mobile. I think that like you know the world is clearly shifting to mobile. I think we want to like iterate and like prototype on our product a lot quicker to see like what are the kinds of things that we could provide in a mobile like centric world that would make people's lives simpler and easier. So those are the two big criteria for success. For me. Well, congratulations to all your success. Dropbox obviously um, continually doing well. You guys had you know every yeah. every startup has speed bumps, but you know hit cruising altitude. You guys are now servicing the IT market. Well, it all well it all depends you know? on how, how big you think the market is. I want to get to you know three billion users, so I, I feel as though we're still a long way from that. Yeah, no, and you know, and you know what? You guys are just the beginning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very much the beginning. We are less than one percent done in my mind. Yeah. I love the attitude. That's a tech athlete here on the cube. Uh, we'd love it. We'd love to hear that mojo. Dropbox is uh, gonna just at the beginning of their journey. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive Thank you, coverage of uh, the Stanford Excel Forum. We're right back with our next guest after this short break. Thank you. Nice yeah, man. Pleasure. Thanks, John. All right.